What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, this is episode number 46. And we start our stays of stuff on the back of transfer deadline day where we signed Weston McKenney from Newcastle United for I think it's 40 million pounds, 40 million pounds I think it was, but even so, great deal regardless for McKenney. I, I said before, I've had him before, he's so versatile, that's the main reason why I love him man, he's so, so versatile, the guy can literally play anywhere. So his deadline day comes to a close, we're now now 5 star team. I, I, I gotta say, you know, I said at the back end of the last episode, so our fixtures there for September. This is an unbelievable Everton team, you know, unbelievable Everton team. And I, I, I'd say if we fail to get this side in the Champions League for next year, like I don't know how I keep my job. I mean, last year, don't get me wrong, I still feel as though the ball criticism was way too harsh. Do you remember the back in the last season, right before the FA Cup final, the board were calling me in for performance review meetings, and I was like. Guys, you do realise you haven't won a major trophy in 30 years. I've just led you a, led you to a final. Stop pulling your best Daniel Levy impression and let me get on with my job. I really felt the ball a little bit too critical of me last year. But there's no doubt about it now. I, I see now that this team is far too good to be playing outside the chat. We're, we're too good. Like we're, we're, we, are, we are too good now. There's no doubt about it. We've kept hold of our core. We've kept hold of our stars. And if we don't get this side in Europe's elite for next year, then... I, I will deserve the sack, regardless of whether I retain the FA Cup, regardless of whether I win the Carabao Cup for the first time. At the end of the day, this team is, is too good not to be in the Champions League at this current pace right now. So, first game of this episode, perfect start with the Toffees, though. Three wins from three to start the season off in the Premier League. Now to go Brighton away. By the way, can we just, can we just say, like, for Roberto De Zerbi, like, I, I know I said it before in this day, but I'll say it once again. What an incredible job he's done so far this season with Brighton. I mean, coming in to take over Graham Potter, and I know that Potter was only there for three years, but nowadays in modern football, three years is a decent stint. Back in my day, that was short term, but now obviously it's actually quite a, quite a decent stint because of how quick managers get sacked. But can we, can we just give Roberto De Zerbi some credit? Like, I mean, seriously, the guy came in replacing Potter three years at the Amex, laid down his team, De Zerbi's working with a totally new squad, totally new league, you know, first time managing in England, first time managing in the Premier League. He's quite a young manager at 43 years old as well. You know, it's a lot of pressure to replace Graham Potter, who's just left to a, a bigger club in Chelsea. And... I just I don't think the guy's got enough credit because it could have gone either way for Brian. It really could have done. Like they could have, you know, sagged off after a really good start. And people would have thought, well, you know, still a team in transition, still building. But instead, they're in bloody European place. Like they're in seventh place right now, going into the international break. I I don't I don't think he's getting enough credit. Like, I really really don't. When people talk about managers this season that have performed above expectations, well, there's several. You could say Eddie Howe getting to the Carabao Cup final. And his side going for a top four place. Thomas Frank as well at Brentford doing a really good job uh, in his uh, second season uh, in the top flight as well. Obviously, I think Marco Silva, I talked talk before, has done an amazing job for a newly promoted side to be in the top ten right now. But I think I think to me, De Zerbi, like, people were saying who would be your manager of the year right now, even though he's not been there for the full year, I think I think De Zerbi, because there's, there's so, much, so much pressure when he came in. To be where they are right now, I think the guy deserves so much credit, man. Like, he really, really does. But I wasn't going to go easy on him in this game. Despite Rafa Mir giving them the lead, I totally turned it on right, straight afterwards. Romelu Lukaku scored our leveller. Michaelenko got a rare goal to put us in front for the first time in the game. And then Weston McKenney. Isn't it great when you get a debut goal for one of your new guys? Yeah, Weston McKenney hitting the ground running on his Everton debut. Wrapping the points up to make it 3-1. And that's already the second time we've came from behind to win this season like that that's got to feel good man you know like i talk about resilience so often and and just how important it is you know and it's it feels great to know you've already got a couple of wins on your belt where you had to come behind from a trailing position to get the three points resilience just so so important in team sport if you want to win anything or do anything of significance because you're not always going to be leading it's very simple as that so anyway uh, following game uh, was our first European game of the season AZ Altmar when the group was drawn as well didn't really talk about it much but it's not an easy group to be fair AZ Altmar the Dutch side uh, obviously Anderlecht the Belgian side as well and Derry City the Irish club to be fair I, I, I often talk about this I don't know what it is but I love facing Irish clubs in Europe I don't know why. It's often Shamrock Rovers. See, I seem to always have to face Shamrock Rovers, but this time it's Derry City. 
but I love that. I just I, I don't know what it is, but I love facing Irish clubs in Europe, especially when you go away from home as well. Mainly when I'm managing outside of England. I don't know why. I just I just really like it. But yeah, anyway, taking on AZ Outmar here at Goodison Park. Last season, of course, we we topped our group, made it through to the last 16, and then we're knocked out by Arsenal. That was but like, that was so unlucky. That was really really unlucky for us to um to do that and also as well I think in the last episode I, um, I got my Europa League and Europa Conference League and, and top four winners confused as well because I said last last uh, episode Arsenal won the Europa League they didn't it was um, it was Chelsea uh, that won the Europa League last year not Arsenal but Arsenal not sat last year in the Europa League in the last 16 I thought we were very you know unlucky to get drawn against a powerhouse there but this season you know we start off exactly how we needed to comfortable 1-0 winning against Hazel Latimer kind of controlled that game really it was never really under much pressure there against the Dutch side I sort of controlled my way to a 1-0 victory and conserved energy because for the following game this is going to be one of the biggest start of the season off here Man City awful start to the season in in this save in this season here right down the bottom of the table and taking on Guardiola's side here well heading into the game this is something I really want to talk about today two minutes in what is with the card system in in FIFA nowadays why are they always so inconsistent and really bad does it mirror real life? Well, I guess the game's realistic. How is this not a red card? This is cynical from Alfonso Davis. How is that not a red card? He's literally flown in from behind. He's caught the man in a really dangerous area, right on the back of the shin there. That is a straight red card, no doubt about it. And I don't know whether it's because the game's just kicked off and the referee's thinking, oh, you know, free game nerves or whatever, you know, adrenaline running through you. I don't know. But, like, to me, that is a straight red card. That was absolutely awful. We'll talk more about cards later, but that was... I couldn't believe that was given as a straight red there. But despite the fact that I thought Man City were lucky to not be down to 10 men, the first half belonged to me, and I couldn't believe it was still 0-0 in the first half an hour. Like, it was ridiculous. It would work twice in the game. City were flying into tackles, being ridiculously reckless. I was carving them open like a hot knife through butter, and I thought, surely... Someone's going to take the chance. We'll get ourselves in front. And 32 minutes in, after a wonderful little build-up, Gallagher finds Weston McKenney and talk about a new signing, hitting the ground, running. Weston McKenney, I said before, like as an American player, like this dude is just one of the most versatile players I've ever used on FIFA. Like he is literally just like the jack of all trades. And it's one of the reasons why I signed Kefren to round because he's totally versatile, complete utility man. And that is like the coolest feeling when you've got a player who you know can literally play anywhere. Do you remember when I, I showed him you in the last episode, I showed you the stats there. And when I was showing you the development plans and how you can change position, it would take him, I think, two weeks to become a striker. This guy's a midfielder. It would take about two weeks for a striker because his finishing stat is so high. It's ridiculous. This guy can literally play anywhere on the pitch. And there's something to say about those players I just absolutely love. Your Kefren Tarams, your Renato Sanchez's, and obviously Weston McKenney as well. Jack of all trades, I absolutely love them. It's so great. You know, if you ever have an injury crisis like we did last season, sometimes I could chuck Kefren Taram at right back and he just does a really solid job. It's the same with Weston McKenney. I can play this guy literally anywhere on the pitch, maybe not between the sticks, and he'll do a really good job. Even so, City leveled in this game through Erling Harlem, but the second half was where, in the end, our start to the season continued to be unavoidably fantastic. You can't right now say we're riding our luck, because in the end, we took the game to Man City. Nine minutes after the restart, Romelu Lukaku heads in another goal, going for back-to-back -back golden boots, and then Conor Gallagher with 18 minutes on the clock makes it. 3-2. The ex-Chelsea boys getting the goals there late on in a free, sorry, a free one victory. Oh man, like seriously, I know Man City is struggling, but you know, I, I, I got to say, the start we've made this season, I said Champions League or bust this year. We've got to get some silverware once again. But well, I might as well say it early because I'll be saying it very shortly, I'm sure. With the start we made to the season, 100%. What is stopping us being in a title race this year? Because we've got the complete package. We've got the versatility, we've got the squad depth, we've got the first team quality, we've got the star power, 
and we got a core. Do you know what I mean? We're not a new core. We, we are we are a unit, much like Arsenal this year. One of the reasons why, and I stand by this, one of the reasons why they've done so well this year, and I think, are they eight points clear at this point right now? Are they City out of the game now? But even so, one of the reasons why they've done so well, they're league leaders, and they're now, currently now, at this point right now, odds on favourites to win the title, is because they're a core. Like they've developed, they've grown up together, they've been through hardship, they've been through, you know, embarrassing moments like last year's cup knockout, you know, they've, they've been through tough times, they've grown, they've gelled and they've developed as a core and they've stuck together and Arteta's still there as well. That's one of the reasons why, in my opinion, they've done so well this year because they're, they're, they're a side of being through it all together and now they're reaping the benefits of being a unit. So, for us, we're the same. Like, we've been through it. We've been through those bad moments. We've now ended the curse after winning the silverware last year in the FA Cup. What's stopping us being title contenders here? I'm not going to say title winners, but I'm going to say title contenders. I'm not going to say title winners, but title contenders. Nothing is stopping us this year. But anyway, final game of this episode, Accrington Stanley. Who are they? Exactly. Northwest Battle here away from home in the Carabao Cup. Last year, obviously, knocked out early by Wickham Wanderers, but the year before that, EFL Cup finalists to Manchester United who eventually won it and retained it last year. I mentioned cards earlier. How on earth was that a red card? Like, I, I don't understand sometimes. I really don't. Like, the cynical challenge from behind by Alfonso Day was on your booking. That moment there... I'm going out of play. I'm literally going out of play. Sangari dives in. Okay, all right, he doesn't get the ball. But it's not a red, it's a yellow. That's never a red unless you're the harshest referee in the world. And he gives a straight red, even though I was dribbling out of play and about to surrender a goal kick. It's a foul. It's a foul. It's a stupid challenge. It's a foul. It's a free kick. But... In what world is that a red man? Referees are so inconsistent, and it's something I do think needs to be tweaked on, for sure, no doubt about that. Even so, after it now to 10 men, I kind of just ran rampant in the end. Didn't need to, but showed no mercy. And after a red-hot start, I wanted to show we're going to be a ruthless Everton team this year. 6 nil the final score great to see tom davis get a goal and do the ronaldo celebration and boss barkley get his first this year uh, first as well we're through last 16 the fl cup and we'll be taking on a bit of a tougher opponent wolves once again away from home this time more than your ground where i regularly re regularly struggle at but right now 100 percent in all competitions we won our first carabao cup game we won our europa league group opener and to start the season off Top of the table, two points clear of Arsenal. I'll say it once again. What's stopping us this year being a title contender? Here's the answer. Absolutely nothing. But that will end today's episode of the Real Scrimmer, guys. Big fan watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have a like, most of you all have a fantastic day. And I will see you for the next episode of the Realistic Career Mode.